traders at Access Bank say demand remains on the the long end of the T-bill curve as players position ahead of next week's bond auction. Odinaka Linus Mokonkwo, fixed income trader at Access Bank, joins us now to give us some thoughts and reactions to, to uh, the today's scheduled retail auction. Odinaka, it's a pleasure to have you on the program. So before we talk about that bond auction for next week, uh, maybe you can talk about that retail auction and the key takeaways for you. What, what can we anticipate from that? Oh, uh Today, there is a retail auction on the FX. Uh, this is a bi-weekly uh, retail auction, so there is nothing new to expect, really. Uh, so today, the CBM will just be intervening in the market to provide funds for uh, clients uh, where the uh, banks submit their bid uh, to the central bank. And of course, we have seen the Naira weaken slightly in that um, INE window. Uh, and as we begin to come to the end of this election cycle, I wonder how you think that could impact, uh, in, should I say, dollar supply to the market and investor sentiment in general with respect to the currency? So the INE market uh, currently is trading at uh, 462. That was the closing yesterday. Uh, the demand uh, was, is, also, is always higher than the supply. Uh, so we saw that uh, the 91 Kobo uh, depreciation from day on day. Uh, in terms of uh, investors' uh, sentiment, everywhere uh, seems uh, calm, uh, though there is a bit of a positive uh, outlook generally. And of course, this begins the countdown, if you like, for the current administration. And there are, there are, con there are expectations that maybe some tough decisions may be taken, for example, with respect to the, uh, the controversial fuel subsidies and potentially other changes as well. Um, What's your view on how you think the, the last few days of this um, administration could impact the financial markets? Uh, so generally, if you look at the budget uh, for the 2023, uh, the, uh, is, is a robust uh, budget which al already captured the uh, fuel subsidy uh, removal. So the, the uh, uh, DMO has been borrowing aggressively. Uh, the last borrowing on the bond was over uh, about 700, over 700 billion. So we expect uh, this increased borrowing uh, to continue as they breach that uh, ad, uh, budget deficit gap. All right, and in terms of yields, what are your expectations for that bond auction, given the trends we've seen recently? For the bond auction is on Monday, uh, the DMO uh, is conducting uh, the bond auction on Monday, uh, where they are meant to offer about uh, 360 billion across the 2028, 32, 37, and uh, 49. Uh, so market expectation uh, is that I, we're going to see a bit of decline in stop rates, considering where these bonds are trading in the secondary market. Uh, if we can recall, uh, the last bond auction on the 2049, it closed at 16. Uh, market is already trading around uh, the 15.55 levels. So we expect uh, that a, a slight drop from uh, the 16 levels that it closed in February auction. Clearly, yeah. inflation should impact where these yields are trading. But as has been the case for quite a few months now, we continue to see these yields lower than the inflation rate. What are your expectations for inflation? Do you anticipate that we're going to see a decline more so as we wind down this election season? And what are your expectations also for yields going forward? So for inflation, if you recall, just uh, I think this week, uh, it's inflation printed at 21.91. That's about uh, a nine basis points uh, increase, uh, which is kind of uh, mega. So generally, we'll continue to see inflation hover around these levels uh, because we don't really see any much impact. Uh, if you recall, last year, we had a flooding case. And I, I, I want to believe that we've started seeing uh, a bit of uh, uh, impact on that. Uh, so if you look at this report that was released, uh, the, this uh, recent inflation figures, you can see that the major contributor to that uh, increase in inflation is the food inflation across the oil, cereals, and uh, other food items. Now there's so much talk about bailouts for banks in North America, Europe, uh, in, against the backdrop of what happened with SVB. Uh, and of, of course, it begs the question, to what extent is there a contagion risk with respect to investors in Nigeria, euro bonds, for example, and even potentially the local bonds? What are your thoughts on that? So on the local bonds, I don't see any impact. And uh, when you look at what has happened in the Silicon Valley Bank, 
uh, the Nigerian banks are uh, uh, to an extent are not really exposed to that bank. So you will see just a minimal exposure towards the fintechs, especially for those that uh, the venture capitalist funds will house their funds in uh, the SVB bank. So generally, uh, in the Nigerian bank, uh, we may not see any impacts. Uh, on the Eurobond market, so yes, there's a bit of reaction. As of yesterday, uh, it was a sell-off. Uh, we saw about a $2 uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, price uh, change. So. Uh, we're already seeing that impact as people. And if you, if uh, as at yesterday to uh, US equity kind of gain, so uh, a lot of uh, ETF funds will want to uh, just take advantage of that by selling off those uh, euro bonds and trying to invest on in those uh, US equities.